Hey folks, we're 12 days into 2015. Why is that significant? The last model year of the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution ever is 2015. Last year of the Evo. The fast car, they're killing the fast car. I'm David Blue, and today, I have the fast key. And by the fast key, I mean this is actually called the fast key. Two, Mike, with a Y, M-Y-K-E, his 2008 Lancer Evolution 10. So, Mike, programmed the hard drive full of Skrillex. <laughs> Three days grace. And there was also a, uh, what was it, Hindu dubstep? Yeah. Hindu dubstep CD. And the car smelled overwhelmingly of body lotion, gambling debt, and, well, suffering, really. Mike, I'm driving his car today. Later, we'll be calling up his girlfriend. Calling. Ashley. Last Evo ever. 2015. That's sad, but this one, the Evo 10, is more refined than any of them, especially the MR, which is this trim. And with the MR, you get, well, it's actually the MR Premium. You get uh, a stereo system, you get stuff to keep you cold and warm, and you get locks, and a lot of other exterior stuff, but we can talk about that later. So, the fast key. I can't put it in, because this comes with the keyless entry option. They've just capped off the ignition. Way to go, Mitsubishi. Fuck it. The Evo is, of course, powered by a two-liter, four-cylinder, high-tech, turbocharged engine. And it makes about 300 horsepower on this iteration. Car weighs about 3,500 pounds, maybe a little less. So it's, it's got good numbers, but you already know all this. So another thing to note, this being an Evo, we're going to attract a whole new audience. That being straight car guys. Car guys that want to go fast. Uh, and there is, as far as I've seen, not an actual good Evo 10 review on YouTube. So hey guys, welcome to Honk. You'll see how things are done. Please watch more of the videos. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start the car now. We got the thing in here. I'm starting the car. It says welcome. Yep, the car lets me know that there's might be ice on the road. I've got the Mitsubishi Nav Entertainment System. The car may lock on to anything. Also worth noting, and it used to be sacrilege apparently, but this car, being the MR, actually comes with the twin clutch automatic transmission. It's an automatic, got paddles. That's another $3,000, but it comes also with the spoiler and the and the BBS wheels and the... the thing on the back, it's the splitter, the, the thing that splits the air, the rear splitter thing, that thing. Did not come with this aftermarket boost gauge, which is directly in my line of sight for the tachometer, so I cannot see the tachometer, basically, in a normal driving position. Thank you, Mike. Gonna disengage the obviously meant to be used handbrake, it's big metal, says Lancer on it. Pull up on the cock ring shaped transmission release. Turn on the blue HIDs and I've got navigation. So we're just starting off in uh, normal mode here. We're just gonna pitter patter around town. These Recaro seats are extremely comfortable for me. Everyone complains about them, but lose some fucking weight. So anyway, surprisingly livable from what I've heard of the Evo. A little bit of road noise, but of course that's to be expected. I'm gonna go on the highway, the dual clutch, it's very eager when you get into the throttle a little bit on the highway. It is very, very eager to downshift, and I like that. It makes the car feel as much like a little boy's toy as it should. Of course, we've got the AWC ASCT TCS 911 set to tarmac. Red three settings, tarmac, gravel, and snow. A boost gauge says four. I'm gonna go up to the full 70. Ooh, this is a good time to note that while the bumps can be a little bit intense, this car doesn't crash over bumps, and that's the important thing. The only thing that I really hate in hard cars is when it feels like the car is going to break when you go over a bump and it's the, the crashing. And you can hit a hard bump, but if it's just like, a, if, if it's the, the German, you know, sort of thump, then you're good. Thumping, not banging, but banging lots of girls. Okay, guys. Um, that's another thing. We're actually going to go pick up some... Pick up some girls. Yeah, we're gonna pick up some girls. This particular car, Mike's Evo, is in Wicked White. Your other options are Phantom Black, Octane Blue, Rally Red, Apex Silver, and Fuck Yellow. Imminent Death Orange. So the transmission in this car, it's got normal mode, which we've been in, which is actually livable in daily driving. It's got sport mode, which makes things more aggressive. It starts to downshift when you start braking, but this is the thing. The actual car, the only mode that matters, is called S-Sport. So you have to hold the thing up for in three park. seconds. I, you don't have to be in park, you just have to be stopped. And then the car takes on a different light. Put it over in manual. Oh 
my god. Oh my. Oh my god. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah. It suddenly becomes quite savage. The manual says, do not operate the car and escort on public roads. It's for the track only. That's why you have to stop and wait a whole three seconds. The thing about this chassis is it's just got so much mechanical grip. It's got a limited slip differential. It's got that wing out back and a diffuser. That's the splitty thing that I was thinking of. And it's actually fun functional, I think. Probably not at this speed. The big question is, is the Evo a tool to evade death or a tool to meet it? When you buy an Evo, do you want to die or do you want to go very fast in something that is extremely drivable by the average man? And the answer is that it's a way to cheat death because it really is grippy, accurate, 30. Oh yeah, this is the town. Better downshift. In sport mode, there's still some hesitation. I mean, I can't imagine why you use the normal sport mode, except you were just in, you know, you were just offered to race someone in a WRX STI. You have two options. You either race them or kill them. And uh, you can't stop. So, actually, I bet the STI requires that too. So you, you have to be like, hey man, can we just uh, pull over? Uh, just a second. I was like, yeah, we got, we both have to engage our S-Sport modes. Oh yeah, I bet you watched this Initial D. Of course, Takumi. My favorite anime ever. Actually, the only one I've ever seen. I just watch it over and over and over again. You approach the corner coasting. You get to the speed to, to you get all set up at the corner. And by the time you're entering the apex, you add power and you power through the corner. And this car just grabs and goes. It just grips and grips, but for the average guy, for someone like me, who has no professional training, that is there, therefore on the same level as every other driver ever, this car is easier to drive fast than anything else. If the Hawk review of the Evo 10 is the first thing you've seen on the Evo, period, hello, welcome, stick around, visit Drywall.ws, and then go check out some pros driving this car, because where it really belongs, is on the track, but the amazing thing is that when you're not on the track, you've got four seats and the most competent car in the purest sense of the term, getting from A to B, you can simply do it more quickly than any other vehicle. I was searching for a, a way to differentiate it from the, from the GTR, because philosophically they are the same in a lot of ways. Obviously not quite sort of the same level of performance, but the difference is that the Evo was designed to be driven by anybody, and yes, the modern GTR is, can be driven by anybody because it's a gigantic server, but the Evo does it from simply grip, really. You know what's horrible? When you end up in Lupus, Missouri. That's a disease. Yeah, no, it's, it's to the left. Lupus is that way. Are you? Yes. I accidentally why ended would, up there. Why would you ever go that way? Yeah, we're, we're not going that way. We're not going to lupus. Sorry, folks. Those of you that wanted a disease. Oh, the turbo is just... You know, this car has 43,000 miles of turboness on it. It's, that turbo's been swollen for, for 43,000 miles, and it still just sounds like a jet engine. This car is old school forced induction. This turbocharger was not added to make it more efficient. It was added to do this. Yeah, this is, uh, this is fast. Uh, this is a fast car. Everything about this car is about going quickly. And there's not too much on this car, which is why you can buy it for a reasonable price and why it has the same performance as cars that cost, well, especially when it came out, twice as much, three times as much. And why there's always been that Evo fuck you-ness. The, the Evo will always one-up something because it was, it was built to simply go fast. Assembly of God. Well, at least we're close to a church. I like to drive a manual Evo before I make any big statements, but I think I'm valuable here being David Blue and not being an Evo purist or someone who follows the Evo particularly, I've always known it's good. Always had kind of a thing with cars that are simply built to go fast, especially when you're just driving them 
on public roads, but we can talk about that later. But I'm not an Evo purist, so I look at this twin clutch and I see something that I could live with every day that actually can function, can cut it as an everyday automatic. But then it can do crazy ass shit and fire off those 